We have half an hour left, and uh, I want to give directly the floor to Philip Czech, who is also working with very delicate sounds, but like different ones, not coming out of the nature. Uh, you will hear in a minute. And uh, Philip Czech is uh, like really a pioneer of experimental turntablism, uh, doing his work for since the 80s for many, many years. And uh, yeah, we awarded uh, Sweet. This was like the release which was handed in. And yeah, we rewarded it because of its extraordinary beauty, which your music in general has, I would say. And uh, yeah, it's a very unique musical language. And with every release, really draws you into, you and so on and so that. forth. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I can't think better than that, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. these, are, these are my tools, so. Uh -huh. Well, I think I'll just say a little bit about um, my history. If you, uh, probably people, won't, a lot of people might not know, but uh, I um, my background is in visual arts, same as Jana. Uh, uh, um, but I I always loved music and sound, and that's what I always wanted to do. And as a as a teenager, I learned a little bit of guitar and keyboards and stuff. But what I could do with that wasn't interesting to me. It wasn't. I couldn't create something that. You know, was good sounding or interesting to me. And if I had a, a little bit of a talent, I, I could draw and paint. So I, was, I went to art college. And then my, my way into music was through DJing. Uh, um, I went to New York in 1979, stayed with friends uh, there who took me to these incredible clubs. And, uh, and, and the, the people that influenced me from the start were people like uh, Larry Levan, Shep uh, and, and uh, my absolute favorite was Walter Gibbons, who I'm, you know, died in the 80s. Uh, uh, um, you know, I, I don't think he is recognized enough for, for the incredible stuff he did, his, his mixes. Uh, um, uh, and uh, that, that was my, so I bought a lot of 12-inch singles and stuff, and I set out uh, to copy, basically started off by copying what they did, or try to copy what they did. So in the early 80s, in, in, I was living in London then, um, you, uh, I actually worked with a friend of mine, we like, were a, um, a, a team, uh, a DJ team, and we called ourselves BBBGs, which was um, the bouncing Bethnal Green Bambinos, <laughs> uh, and, uh, which is from a, from a very famous uh, English comedy film called Passport, Passport to Pimlico. The very beginning of the film, you see a record playing on a record player, a record playing on an old record player, uh, and uh, uh, and and, they go, and then somebody just says, "Oh, that, what was that? That's uh, that's uh, Bethnal Green Bambinos uh, uh, playing uh, Latin uh, music," um, and so we were that for some time, but I quite quickly sort of moved away from that because the the, the thing that you did. Um, that I'm not, I'm not dissing or putting down uh, people that do fantastic dance music and uh, DJing, but I, you know, I started to think, oh, I could maybe bring in all sorts of bits of uh, records and music for this. And of course, you do that, you will clear the dance floor. And uh, uh, and I realized this is probably not the the area that I should be in. Uh, uh, you know, I thought what. Well, what was happening was interesting, but it was completely the wrong context. And then also at the time in London, I met other people, I met improvising musicians, got quite early, early electronica people and stuff. And, and that was the world that I shifted to. I still occasionally do, uh, sometimes live for, for friends and stuff, do a DJ set, because I have a fantastic collection of 70s, early 80s, uh, uh, 12 inches from, from America, which Sometimes I'm tempted to sell because I actually did sell one because I got I got two of them and it just went for an unbelievable amount of money. But uh, um, uh, uh, so that was that that was my beginning, and and over the years from those those times, I, I 
my first um, formative years of then working more loosely with records was, uh, um, I was very lucky, I, I, um, I worked with several dance companies in, in, in London. I worked with one particular choreographer. We actually performed here in Linz in 1985, I think, it was the first time I came to Linz. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, him and there was, I think, two dancers came with us, and I can't remember the venue, but I know they had a visitors book, and if, if they're still going, if it's still there, I, I actually uh, st stuck a, a record in the visitors book, which I signed, so it might still be here. Uh, um, and 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 I developed my way of playing, way of working on the road. Uh, uh, um, Laurie, the, the choreographer that I worked with, he had an agent based in Holland who just got us work actually all around the world. It was it just, um, I, when I look back on it, I thought, you know, I got paid to learn how to do what I do, you know, like just by touring. Uh, and, um, and, you know, I, every, every show I did, I learned something more, you know, it, it, it was, uh, I, you know, blessed with that, that, that I had all that opportunity to just try out things in front of a, an audience, you know, and learnt for myself what, what worked and what didn't. Uh, at that at the very early time, of course, I was using uh, Technics decks, uh, which uh, DJs use, and uh, I think like a big moment for me, like a, a, a big shift in what I did, was I had some old shellac, you know, the old 78 um, records, uh, um, which I wanted to use one time, and of course they, they don't play at 78. And I, I, I noticed in like an old junk shop, uh, 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 a record player that had, that had a 78, an old one that's with a speaker, but it also had like a little tape out, so I, I know I could put it through a mixer. And, uh, uh, and so I got that home and started playing that. But it wasn't the 78 that was like the revelation for me. It was they, they, the ones that made up until about 1965 or something like that. They had a 16 RPM, which is like a really, I've only ever seen one record that was to be played at 16 RPM. And could, they were actually, I think they were all speech records like learn a language, lingophone, things like that. Although since then, a friend of mine in America who does uh, turntable stuff, uh, last time I saw him, he'd got one that's got eight RPM. It's like, it's like moves like that, you know, it's incredible. You can get like about 20, you know, it's, 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 it's equivalent to a, to a, a you know, uh, an MP3 player. You can, on one record, you'll probably get your whole collection, it goes that slow. But of course, it's very low-fi, uh, um, which MP3s are very low-fi too, but they, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, so that that was so. Since then, since I bought that, I've I've pretty well only worked with um, um, the old record players and and the, and Sweet, which was actually a live recording. I, I'll show you all the tools. I had two two of these uh, record players, um, and this, it was actually recorded at a concert live in Liverpool. Um, so I use record players like that, and they, you know, this is like 16 round to 78. Um, beautifully super light, so you can carry them anywhere. Uh, um, a low fi as I said. Uh, uh, um, two of those through a mixer with, I have a delay pedal and there's some effects in the mixer. Uh, this is also a really critical, this is the digital end of my work. <laughs> the, that this is a Casio SK-1, which I think they stopped making a long time ago, but I, th I think it's the king, queen of qu keyboards. It is instant. There is no, you don't have to go through menus or, or, or other things. Actually, you instantly can use it. You I, I just sample as I'm playing. I can choose, obviously, we'll make, I can choose which record I want to sample a little bit from and play back. It's like, I think it's one bit or what, something, but, but it, and I like the, again, the, the graininess that, that it, that it uh, gives back from that. And then, um, the, oh, did it, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. The, um, and then the, the record that, uh, that, I'm, that I made, the suite here, that, um, 
my editing is all done on this mini disc player. Uh, um, uh, I love mini disc because you can, again, it's immediate. You uh, like because uh, my er the earliest thing, the earliest editing that I did uh, uh, for the early records and CDs, I did on a reel to reel with, with cuts and stuff. Well, you can do that on a mini disc player. Uh, actually, do sharp cuts and then move them around, but then, but also you don't. There's no mess. You don't. Have, you don't have tons and tons of tape, and also it's a little bit more accurate than cutting. Uh, although I got quite quite accurate with uh, with um, reel to reel, but this you can cut however you want, and then you can just arrange them instantly. Well, within a few seconds, wherever you want to put them. So that is all the material. They, they, these are the tools that I use to make sweet. Uh, um, so the, the, it was a there was a live concert in Liverpool, which is where I live, and um, it was recorded um, uh, digitally. And so I, uh, the original recording I, I, I transferred to mini disc, and I wanted to do. I thought it would be a nice. Uh, you know, I, I enjoyed. I think I thought the concert was really good, and I wanted. You know, it was. I wanted to be re released, uh, and um, but something very different about seeing me play live to then listening at home. So um, some of the early releases weren't like that, but my more recent releases are, I think about what it is to have uh, something played at home. Uh, 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 they're not seeing me play, so they don't see, you know, the really nice record players and stuff. You know, it, it, it's just sound. So, and where I'm construct, then I think about in, in those terms, and that's why I do a lot of editing for for um, for CDs and uh, uh, vinyl releases. Uh, um, uh, so some of my CDs have, you know, one track might be consist of ten or twelve cuts from different concerts or uh, 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 places, but but Sweet is all from the one concert, and so it is all live. I didn't actually do any overdubs or anything. Uh, um, but it is not like the concert uh, uh, that that, um, that I played because it's not even in the right order and and things that were near the end and near the beginning. It's a lot, uh, and it's a, it's a little bit shorter. And I made it as something to listen to home to rather than, you know, uh, uh, sound. And um, and one of the, yeah, one of the things I, I, w I had a talk, there was a talk the other day, and one of the things that I really. Rem remembered so much about, like, as I said earlier, my, my one of somebody that really started me off on doing what I do is Walter Gibbons, and all his mixes that 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 he did, he always wrote "Mix with Love" uh, uh, at the bottom and uh, 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 um, underneath his underneath his name, uh, um, and you know, I I think that is really true. I think that's that's. My 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 intention. You know, I love what I do, and I love music, and I love sound, and 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 that's and I, I, you know, I try to somehow, you know, the, the, the way that I listen, the way that I improvise is through hearing the uh, um, what I hear. I have to be moved by those things, and then once I get that moment. I'll go into it, try to either isolate those things that really do push the triggers or expand on it or, 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 or try to shift um, uh, uh, through phases. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'll play a little bit. I'll play one of the tracks from, 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 the, from Sweet, um, it's on vinyl. This is called Chime Chime, and the reason it's called Chime Chime, it's actually, it's, it's a record, like all the, the records that I use are, are right from all, all ranges of music, you know, in a way like there is almost like the whole history of music and sound is somewhere on some piece of vinyl. And I call this one Chime Chime, it's, a, it, 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 it's, re, it's reoccurred on several uh, record, recordings of mine. I never get tired of working with this particular record, which is an old country record. Uh, uh, um, 
uh, with, a, with a, a beautiful steel guitar playing, although you might not recognize it that because it's really slowed down uh, and, uh, and, and, it, and it, to me it sounds like chimes, but it's, it's a record that I always work a lot with. I'm sure that record will appear again tonight in, in what I do, but um, 
in in the like about two minutes into there, I, I remember now editing it, and in in the there's about a minute where there's like about 25 edits uh, from the concert in there, cuts and um, uh, and uh, the you know sometimes they're just hard cuts and they sort of work, but but also I use maybe use an effect in the same because. I think it relates to my visual art background. I'll try to bleed them so you can use like effects with delays, whatever, to, to, to bleed the two in together rather than, rather than crossfading. Um, one just bleeds over into the next. Um, I think I'm going to have to stop talking now because we haven't got long and uh, time for, for some questions. And um, yeah, tonight the concert, I. It won't be a recreation of that because I can't do the edits in real time. But the uh, but I will use quite a lot. I would actually use the record that I made also as part of the concert. So thank you, thank you. Pierre, yeah, uh, many thanks, Philip, for your presentation. There is eight minutes left, but we can have a bit more time, luckily, so there, that there is some time for questions. And I would uh, yeah, directly ask you uh, what you would maybe like to know more, collect a few questions which then can be answered. So who wants to know more about the music of our winners? <laughs> Okay, I hope somebody is I hope somebody's running around with the microphone. Yes, back there. Here. Here. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, I had a question for Jana on your recording. Is it um, is there an ideal place to be um, actually listening to it? Because I tried it in the car and it doesn't work in the car, but <laughs> <laughs> but but at home it's wonderful. But is it um, is it a five one setup or something like that? A good or or is it just a matter of just immersing yourself right in the middle of it? Yeah, I think uh, you know the car, the frequencies of the too many distractions. Uh, yeah, and, and also the you know the sound of the car itself, which just kill a lot of the frequencies. Uh, an ideal position. I think you just have to kind of find it, find that yourself. You know, because uh, by releasing a CD, I'm giving over the the control of how to listen to to you. You know, so uh, in that sense, um, different from an installation where I decide where you should walk or sit or how to listen. You know, this um, this is exactly what you need to kind of experiment on self itself. I think. So, um, uh, though, of course, I like myself to. Turn off the light, lie down, and uh, you know, uh, just listen. Im yeah. Immerse yourself in it, basically. Yeah, okay. yeah. and I, I prefer now to, uh, when I do concerts, to always have the audience around me in the middle, or and then the speakers around instead of this kind of front and standing in front of people. Hmm. Can I ask one more, one quick one, sure. <laughs> to uh, Philip? Um, I understand that you have a uh, setup with uh, turntables with multiple uh, arms, arm turntables. Did, did, do you no, have, I don't. Do you don't have a? I don't. Not multiple arms. No. Do you have a multiple turntable setup or something? I have a lot of turntables. Yeah, I've done I've done concerts with a lot of turntables, but uh, I don't have uh, I I don't mo ever modify them that much. I have a friend, Yannick Schaefer, who's done like a triphonic turntable and does yeah. a three arms on, on the record player. But uh, no, my, I, I don't really do too much to the, the players uh, 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 that I have. Uh, um, yeah, I've done, I think that, yeah, the, the biggest show I did, I did with 180 record players. And then, but that, and that was with sound that was not amplified because the, these re, these record players had. I've taken the speakers out and stuff because it's less weight to carry, but I can always put them back. But so I had 100 record, 180 record players, with the only sound came out of its own speakers, uh, 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 its own speaker, uh, like an orchestra record players, um, um, and 
that's something I did in the 90s, uh, Vinyl Requiem, which was like a marking of uh, the taking over of uh, uh, the CD department from vinyl department in stores. Because I grew up collecting records, so it was... And I'm, I'm not... I'm, you know, I'm not anti-CDs or digital at all. I mean, I'm pro it because you know most of my releases are CDs. But, but, uh, but it was such an important thing in my life. I felt that I wanted to mark that change, and I still, and my all my source material pretty well is, is 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 vinyl. Uh, um, I'm, I, I still feel I've hardly touched the surface of what can be done. You know. Any more questions? And I'll address this to any of, of you or all of you. Um, you all have mentioned that you have um, a visual arts background. Do you think of things um, visually as you're recording? Do you think of a, a picture in your mind? Or is this purely a sonic experience? Uh, well, uh, yeah. Um I think it's a, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. Uh, I think mostly now it's completely sonic what I do, but as I mentioned, actually some of the, the ways I think about how I put things together is a little bit like my background in visual arts, you know. Uh, um, so I, yeah, it, it's certainly it, it's certainly inform what I do. Uh, I think in sound, the, the visual arts training, but I think mostly it's. The, the, the sonic interest that that that, that I'm trying to hear or after, you know, uh, um, uh, rather than, uh, than, but but it's there, yeah, definitely. I can't help but because that's my background. I can't help but have that, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I'm choosing not to dive, for example. So I'm not photographing what you know the fish. Uh, though another problem with that because would be that uh, I would hear the breathing, uh, which would be a problem. Uh, but I, you know, sound is such a also open media to use that you can create your own images in your head, and and I like that openness uh, it has. You know, um, though I think it's also from the background of working with sculpture. It also, I sometimes feel like I see the, you know, the sounds like, like shapes, you know, or you know how they kind of. When I'm editing, I think, uh, on the more abstract level in that sense, um, but hopefully also it will create images in the head of the audience. Any more questions? Okay, if some questions come to your mind, there is still possibility maybe to talk later on sure. after the concerts. Don't miss it. And we even finish in time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming and listening. <laughs>